2023 continues to march on with no shortage of odd and interesting scientific discoveries. So here are 10 unusual new scientific discoveries for September of 2023. Number 10. Recent Activity of the Galaxy's Supermassive Black Hole The core of the galaxy and the supermassive black hole within it has been quiet for a very long time, or so we thought. The Milky Way's supermassive black hole, Sagittarius A star, was long thought to be relatively dormant. But we also know that at times, it seems that an increase in material can fall into it. We didn't think this could have happened recently, but apparently it did. This involves a strange observation from around 30 years ago. Essentially what happened was galactic clouds of dust and gas lit up for a time. They were about 200 light years from the supermassive black hole, meaning that about 200 years before that, it would have been around the 1770s or so from our perspective, there was a burst of activity. This is relative. The supermassive black hole is about 26,000 light years away, so it really happened long, long ago. But for the activity to hit the clouds, it would have had to have happened in a span of about 200 years. Interestingly, the brightening could be triangulated to a source, which was the black hole. It pointed right to it, and was the right distance to deduce that an outburst had happened. It actually caused a brightening, estimated at about a million times more than normal, and calls into question just how often outbursts like this can happen and what the dynamics are for bursts of infalling material that's probably the cause. Number 9. An Advance in Vitrification One famous method of life extension, or so it's hoped, is cryonics, the freezing of a person shortly after death in hopes of reviving them in the future, when whatever disease that killed them can be cured. But it hinges not just on treatment of the disease, but also repairing the cellular damage caused by the process of freezing. Minimizing that damage is usually done through chemicals and rapid freezing called vitrification. But past there, there will be a greater problem. Thawing out will perhaps be the most damaging part of the process. Cryonics aside, research into vitrification has been crucial in the arena of organ transplantation. This is currently a race against time, Doctors must rush an organ from availability and into the patient as rapidly as possible or it might not work. The option of vitrification has been around for a while and can freeze organs for later use successfully. But the huge problem was in thawing them out. It takes a while and it's uneven, causing thermal damage. And that stood in the way. But a new discovery using nanoparticles of iron allows for even reheating of an organ. The team was able to preserve and actually transplant rat kidneys, and did so 100 days after freezing. If this translates up to much larger human organs, then it has the potential to revolutionize organ transplantation and increase the success and availability of transplants. As to cryonics, this will add a further tool in their kit, but it's unlikely to benefit anyone previously frozen. As an aside, the earliest born person in cryonic preservation was born in 1893, and if ever revived will be the earliest born person living. It's unlikely, however, given that he was frozen in 1967, during the earliest days of cryonics, and the primitive methods used at the time will work against any revival. Number 8. The Heaviest Whale Whale species can be enormous. We often think about huge animal species in terms of the dinosaurs, or even megalodon sharks. But the reality is that the largest animal known to have ever have existed is a mammal, and it's still around, the blue whale. But it's not the largest organism. The fungus and plant world hold those titles. But the blue whale might have a contender for its spot as far as weight within the whale family. An extinct whale specimen, known rather sparsely from a group of fossils found in Peru, date from about 39 million years ago. Paleontologists have pieced together what they think a full skeleton of the species might have looked like, and it's actually rather odd. Though there is some question here because they had to look at similar fossils from related species at the time to do it. It's known as Parocetus colossus, and it seems to have had a rather wide body weighing in at 85 to 350 tons. The largest blue whale known was 190 tons, so this new fossil species might have outdone it in some ways. More fossils are needed to constrain down just how big this extinct whale was, 
and there isn't even a skull known at this point. But the blue whale might eventually lose or retain its position as largest animal, depending on future study and excavation. Maybe we'll get lucky and find a more complete skeleton. Number 7. Transforming Concrete into Batteries One of the great challenges facing humanity as we careen into the future is energy and how we get it. Currently our system is inefficient and unfriendly towards the environment, but there are ways that we can explore that mitigate that, everything from wind farms to solar. But one big issue that affects any power source is storage. We can store energy in batteries, but actually running the world on batteries is fraught with problems. Easy storage of solar energy for solar homes requires investment, maintenance, and so on. But what if it were easier? Research has found that adding carbon to cement can create structures similar to wires made of carbon. After a soak in potassium chloride, the mixture can actually function as a kind of battery and store energy, creating a sort of supercapacitor. And it could store a lot of energy. To run a house, you'd need a large block of it, more than what's going to be in most driveways and foundations. But at the same time, it's relatively cheap, and under testing this type of concrete supercapacitor does not seem to degrade with charging and discharging cycles, at least over 10,000 cycles. So technology such as this may be a major part of the answer in solving the energy problem. Number 6. The Rainy Seasons of Ancient Mars we know there was water on Mars at one time. Dry channels and lake beds dot the surface. But it's not entirely understood how that water behaved. Specifically whether it was transient and came about during things like volcanic activity, melting ice. Or if there was a full-on long-term water cycle going on like Earth. Evidence looking at what was once mud at Gale Crater on Mars, however, seems to have solved this problem showing structures that can only happen in wet, dry cycles here on Earth. The work further showed that Mars appears to have had seasons, where the amount of rain varied corresponding roughly to a single Martian year. And that's where this gets interesting. Other recent work in abiogenesis has shown that wet, dry cycles may have been crucial in the formation of what would become cell membranes. Essentially, it started as a kind of soap bubble situation in a hot spring that dried out over and over. These abiotic proto-membranes might then have been incorporated into abiogenesis. Further, RNA generation itself was correct, in that it merely requires chemically rich water percolating through volcanic glasses. Earth had all of this going on, but interestingly, so did Mars. We know that it had volcanoes and water and the building block chemicals for life. It very likely had hot springs, and it definitely has volcanic glasses. It's looking increasingly like Mars might just have been just as capable of spawning life as Earth. But there's something else. If you have two planets in a star system presenting the conditions for abiogenesis, with Venus shaping out to be a third, then terrestrial planets that can host life almost certainly occur very, very commonly in the universe. Number 5. Tracking Down Mitochondria one of the vital steps life on Earth took towards complexity and eventually us was the prokaryotic, eukaryotic leap. Before that, life was composed of simple bacteria that lacked even the nucleus of a cell. Life actually sat in the prokaryotic state for an unusually long time, about 1.5 billion years or so, before the eukaryotic leap happened. This used to be seen as a potential great filter, because it required one organism to absorb another without digesting it. Since, however, this great filter has weakened through evidence of symbiotic relationships on the microbial scale that could result in something like the leap, though that it took that long would suggest that it might be something that happens only rarely, but probably not uniquely to life in the universe. The absorbed organism in this scenario is a bacteria that would go on to become cellular mitochondria. This again was another mystery because there wasn't any bacteria that had been found that behaved like they do, specifically in regards to the production of two lipids. But the microbial world is far from fully cataloged. There are countless species of microbes we don't know about. And recent work actually has turned up bacteria that seem to be closely related to mitochondria in their chemistry, and also their dependence on oxygen, an interesting feature because that might suggest that the advent of photosynthesis and the oxygenation of the atmosphere 
may have been a factor in delaying the development of eukaryotic life, making the delay in the leap less strange. You need oxygen to create the type of bacteria you need for the symbiotic relationship to occur. Interestingly, this species also really likes hot springs, though can be oceanic as well. Once again, pointing the finger to hot springs as the crucibles of early life in the universe. Number four, the abnormal shrimp from Canada. In paleontology, there has been a long-standing mystery regarding trilobite fossils that show injuries to their thick exoskeletons. Something was eating them. It's just that it was never clear exactly what that was. One candidate, however, was a species known as Anomalocaris canadensis, which is Latin for abnormal shrimp from Canada, which you might find odd for a scientific name, but it really was odd. You see, it was the size of a house cat and had spiny facial appendages, which were thought to be capable of breaking into a trilobite exoskeleton. It turns out they were not, according to recent modeling, meaning that this species must have hunted soft prey. Therefore, the mystery of what preyed on the trilobites remains open. Number 3. Early Hominid Craziness Long before anatomically modern humans appeared, there were a number of early hominids present on Earth that interacted with each other. At least they very likely did, but little is known about how. However, a recent examination of a fossilized early hominid leg suggests that it may not have been good. The leg bone fragment the species came from is uncertain. It could be Homo erectus, Homo habilis, or another related but more distant and primitive species, Paranthropus boisei. The bone, which is about 1.5 million years old and from Kenya, shows marks that are inconsistent with animal bites. Rather, they appear to have been made by stone tools. Further, the marks appear near a muscle attachment point, suggesting butchering for meat, but could have been a ritual act. Other bones showing this have surfaced in the past, but were called into question. But it may be that long ago, the different species of hominids were hunting and eating each other, or even practicing cannibalism of their own species. It's interesting here that there has been a lot of skepticism against this find in the scientific community. It is, after all, based on a single fossil bone and a jawbone that was called into question. But it's not really an extraordinary claim, since both the Neanderthals and anatomically modern humans have practiced cannibalism, if rare. It's not a far stretch to wonder if the other hominids did as well. Number 2. Mars quakes were detected in the 1970s In 1975, NASA sent two landers to Mars, the first to successfully operate on the surface of that planet, Viking 1 and 2. The Viking landers were equipped with seismometers to ostensibly see if they could pick up any earthquake analogs on Mars, at the time unknown whether it happens or not especially since that planet doesn't have plate tectonics. It turns out they do happen, but the Viking landers didn't answer that question at the time. The seismometer on Viking 1 didn't work at all, but Viking 2 did work, and it got two signals over its operational life. The problem was the researchers couldn't prove that they actually were Mars quakes, or if they were just wind. In 2018, the InSight probe landed with a seismometer many thousands of times more sensitive than Viking and confirmed that Mars quakes do occur. And recent research has shown that the signals Viking picked up are consistent in profile with what InSight picked up, meaning that Viking 2 did likely discover Mars quakes. What's particularly interesting here, however, is that both landers are located in the Utopia Planitia region of Mars. And with some of the InSight quakes, the culprit appears to have been a site known as Cerberus Fossae that shows surface faults linked to volcanism. These features appear relatively young, so it may be that Viking and InSight picked up evidence of current volcanic activity, at least subsurface on Mars, for which other evidence is mounting. Mars may not be as dead as we once thought. Number 1. Unexplained Gamma Ray Emissions from the Sun The Sun emits gamma radiation, which is in part due to a rather odd phenomenon. When energetic cosmic rays from interstellar space hit the Sun, which are expelled by its magnetic field, but they collide with other particles thereby emitting gamma rays. Very high energy cosmic rays are repelled by the sun. So recent work has detected very high energy gamma rays coming from the sun that should not result from this process. Rather, the sun is producing gamma rays at energies at home in a particle accelerator, in the tera-electron-volt range. 
This is a trillion times higher than our normal LED light. The sun itself has no obvious mechanism to do this, nor does its magnetic field and upper atmosphere. So the source of this strong radiation remains a mystery. It may be a mystery for a long time, because there are some models that suggest dark matter trapped inside a star like the sun could result in the emission of high energy radiation. But we know scarcely anything about dark matter. But this would mean that there are ways it can interact and produce effects other than gravity. What else might be hidden in the reality of dark matter remains to be seen. Thanks for listening. I'm futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier. Be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.